What They Forget to Tell You, episode 21. What, what was that? Because it hadn't connected yet, but we're connected now. We're always connected. You hear that, guys? We're always connected. Cindy, Cindy. how could you be watching? Hi. Hi. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Um, welcome again to this week's podcast and live feed on Alzheimer's, what they forget to tell you, episode 21. Oh my God. <laughs> Can you see her? Why are you laughing, Cindy? Hi, Bill. I'm watching you guys in mute on my other phone. <laughs> and it's, it's quite entertaining. You know. Hi, Zelina. Sandy, hello. Hello, everybody. Good evening. We are back again. Alzheimer's episode 20. You like that? Love it. Okay. All right. So let's get right to the meat and potatoes. Her okay. favorite thing. We are talking about this subject here. Karen has written a book and uh, we've talked about it a couple of, well, pretty much every podcast. Mm -hmm. so far um, about her mom's journey with this disease um, going on 18 years mm -hmm. and counting um, available for you guys on Amazon Barnes and Noble um, chapters. chapters also you can all get your own personal copy if you inbox Karen and uh, Send her some details and, you know, you can get your autographed copy sent out to you. So, some exciting stuff happening. Let's get right to it. How are you this week? Um, I'm good. Good. Busy. Busy week. It's all only Wednesday, but it was busy. Busy's good. Mm -hmm. How's mom? Oh, funny that you should say that. So, last night when... I usually say goodnight to my mom when I'm going to bed. So... I went to see her and then I honestly thought she wasn't with us anymore. Why? I know her breathing was so shallow I couldn't tell if she was breathing because mm. I, I kept looking and she wasn't making any sounds. She normally makes at least some sound and uh, yeah I had to like really even when I you know you put your finger I couldn't see her chest going up and down because I guess it's shallow. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't feel anything, and she felt cold, like... Oh, so you were scared. Yeah, I was scared. Yeah. But then she made a sound, so, okay, crisis averted. And I guess, you know, as much as it's been, what, two years that she's now been in palliative, it's still never easier, or you don't get immune or accustomed to it. It's just... Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. It's reality of the palliative journey. Hello, Karen and Wendy. How are you doing from uh, Bill? Yes, uh, I'm doing okay. Doing good. Oh, I um, started another course. So I have four more left. And then what? You're like a brain surgeon, an <laughs> astronaut. I don't know. Like a, no. what, are you, what is it again? No. Some kind of something. What are you again? It's just, it's just a doctor in, oh. ed in education. Okay. Okay. Pass salt. Okay, so okay. today, <laughs> good talk. <laughs> we uh, we've got Cindy, my sister-in-law, back on the phone, um, wanting to talk about today's well, subject. Yeah, we, it's a continuation because we were talking about um, caregiving, even being a primary caregiver, if you're in the home, or if you are, um, you're. A your loved one is in a nursing home and how there's still challenges regarding both those roles. So Cindy brings that perspective. Her father is has been in a nursing home and he has dementia. Um, so she's going to talk a little bit about the financial component because it's not necessarily free. We, we think that we in Ontario have um, health coverage and things are free, but it's until you have to access it, you realize a lot's what, not. What's covered and what's not covered. Right. And okay. so let's talk about that, Cindy. 
Hi, Sin. Okay. Hi. Welcome back. Are? Yes, I'm back. Um, actually, I like what you said, Karen, about that idea of uh, thinking that everything is going to be free and taken care of because there's a lot of different loopholes that we're not aware of until we actually face them. Um, so my, my dad is in a government-funded nursing home. Um, and so I can only speak to our experience, and that is based on um, limited income. Um, so if you were to kind of visit some of these nursing homes, they have different types of rooms, right? They have w double occupancy rooms, so there's two people or a semi. So there's two residents in one room, and then you have the private rooms. Um, all the private rooms are not um, available if you are not able to pay the full, I guess, rent or the room and board. So give me an idea um, of how much that, what does that run somebody? I, and that's the thing, I don't, I can't necessarily, it's a, it's a highly expensive, because I'll just tell you in comparison, okay? So um, we were not eligible for a private room because it costs literally like double or triple the amount that we're paying right now. So the way it works for the semi rooms is, um, if you're receiving government pensions, so CPP, um, so Canadian Pension Plan or Old Age Security, um, what happens is the nursing home has this algorithm based on every notice of assessment, and your rent is calculated so that everything, every month, goes to the nursing home minus $120. So... And I'm sorry, um, hold on. So they expect, what are you supposed to do with $120? What is that supposed to do? So the $120 is what they consider their personal allowance. So the idea is essentially the nursing home is going to cover for, um, you know, um, accommodation, for food, for laundering, for uh, all the PSWs and all the actual care. Um, things that are not covered would be things like medication, um and outside utilities like cable or phone you'd have to pay for that how about, any additional sorry how, i was gonna say how about incontinent supplies no they cover incontinent okay. supplies to a certain degree so when so when my mom was there she had a colostomy bag okay um that was not covered so we had to pay out of pocket for her colostomy bag um, but incontinence supplies, like my, my dad is currently um, in uh, the adult diapers. Right. They cover all of that. Um, so outside of that, so yeah, there's the medication, um, the outside bills, and then also like personal hygiene. So things like lotion and toothbrushes and getting his hair cut. Um, for people to cut his toenails, that stuff we have to pay out of our pocket. Um, so there was a lot of things that w essentially my, my both my parents had to give up because it didn't cover the 120. So they weren't able to sustain their life insurance policies because that wasn't covered and that would take up most of their high personal hygiene. Um, so when my mom passed away, uh, my brother and I took out life insurance policies for my dad so we pay for that out of our pocket okay right um now the other thing is so say for example um for right now my my dad um his rent is about 1600 because he gets 1720 roughly around like that um through cpp and oas if you say for example they get um mm -hmm. He gets approved for the GIS, which is the Guaranteed Income Supplement that yeah. most elderly people are able to get. Not my um, mom. At, sorry? Not my mom. Right. So not all. Like you have to do that whole eligibility thing. Well, it's based and, on on income, right? right? Right. And both my parents were on long-term disability from like decades before they were... Um, uh, they they were brought into the nursing like, homes. So like the, CP, dad, the CPP hmm? long term, right? Yes. Right. Yeah. So they never met the criteria for private room because they had no income and they had no essential assets or anything like that. Uh, so if, wait, for can, example, sorry, yeah. I just want to go back so that people understand um, because they they factor in all your assets, right? Yes. Right. So that would be like. If you had RSPs, yes. any investments, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So all of that gets 
into consideration for financial eligibility. And, uh, sorry, mm -hmm. I'm just going okay. to, because I just want people to understand. So, they will factor in all your assets. This is, we're, uh, if you just joined, we're talking about the difference between caring for a parent in a nursing home and the, re the financial component of caring for a parent in a home. So, um, this also means that your father potentially, and I'm just putting it out there, mm -hmm. could be sharing a room with somebody who has zero assets, mm -hmm. right, and doesn't have to pay anything extra because of that. Right. right. Most of the time, though, um, depending on how many, how much assets they have, they would go into a private room, right? Right. So the semis are usually people who, again, can't afford the monthly rent because of how much it costs. Um, or are solely dependent on government um, government funding. So one thing that is also important to remember is if he if they're in eligible for additional income, so the GIS, which is the guaranteed income supplement, is something that they would add on every month, right? It's it's quite negligible if you think of it, it's roughly a hundred dollars a month, right? Right. If it's still when you add that onto your month his monthly um, pension, if it's still under the rent, they will take that too. So they'll take anything you have minus $120 as long as it falls under the set rent. And the, hundred, and the $120 is per month? That's per month. What are you supposed to do with that? <laughs> right. So a lot of the stuff I we will pay out of pocket. Um, so my dad doesn't have cable because he doesn't need it. He also, um, he doesn't use it, sorry. He um, also had to get a wheelchair because he's now uh, wheelchair bound. That was not covered. So we had to pay for the wheelchair. Even through assisted devices? We got, we got, um, we got the coverage from assisted devices, but it only covered like 70%. So we had to then pay the additional 30% or the remaining 30%, which it equaled out to around three to $400. Well, with my mom, she had to get a special um, wheelchair because it has to go right in the shower, right? Right. And it was like $2,000. Right, yeah, so my dad's is just a very basic wheelchair. Um, but yeah, so that's not covered um, through the home. Um, so that's, that comes out of our pocket. Um, if your if your loved one is on a lot of medication, it can add up, right? Like even if because they're because of their age, they don't they only pay I think the dispensement fee. Yeah. Um, it still comes out to like twenty. Well, at least for my dad, like twenty to twenty five dollars a month. Um, that has to be paid every month, right? So that comes out of the one hundred and twenty. So there's a lot of and this is a lot of different things like. Just a lot, like they consider them luxuries, like a TV and phone and really nice smelling shampoo and lotion and that kind of stuff that would be paid by the family. Okay. And so regardless of how much money you earn or they earn, as long as it's under the rent, they will take everything except for 120. So like, so okay, so let's put it in perspective. Let's just say, so if you had... I don't know, I guess if you had more money, they're gonna take everything. Everything. So then so potentially, like let's just say, okay, uh, your pension is like $3,000 or $4,000. And the rent is 5,000? No. Is what you're saying? Well, okay, so I guess my head goes around like, you'll never know how much the rent is. That's not full disclosure. That's not transparent. It's not trans, uh, like they gave it to me along, like when I first put them in, and I, we didn't, we weren't eligible, right? So I, I can't say because that was also thirteen years ago. Oh, okay. Can I, can I stop you because? Yeah. Why don't you tell? Anita wants to know what, oh, sorry, what, yeah. but what Wendy keeps laughing at. So, just tell them. I apologize. <laughs> um, oh my god! I even know what this is. She's not laughing at Cindy for no, sure. I'm not. I have a husband that has issues, clearly, that feels like every time we're on camera, it's He's doing time Michael for him Jackson moves, to act like a fool. Walking so kicks. I was doing my best to keep a straight face, but obviously, 
he was he just kept going until I broke and I broke so I apologize Anita and to all the other people that are watching me try to hold it together yeah anyway continue guys I apologize no that's okay so yeah so basically um, the way that it works then um, is uh, okay say for example the rent is four thousand dollars for a private room okay right, right. And CPP and OAS is only giving you 3000 right? Every no, month. so what I want to know, I get that part. I get the fact right. that they're going to take whatever. Right. Up until, right. But my thing um, was that you could potentially be paying, I'm trying to put it in perspective for people to understand that you could be paying the 4000 and somebody could be paying 1700 Yes. Yep. Depending on your And you're, in the, you're getting the same care. The same care. So yes. I want people to think about what I just said. Yes. All right. I do apologize if there's background noise. I just have to go and, and get... Um, okay, so anyway. let's... But yeah, so essentially that's how it works. So no matter how much they, how much more he would get on top of that, it doesn't matter. It's negligible because the nursing home would then take it, right? Um, and they'll and leave us with 120 because that's where we're at. Because they're not eligible for a private room. They're not eligible for um, any of that but yes you're correct people are going to be paying different prices for the same care um so you're almost like you're almost like i guess damned for having a really good job and great income and a great education and a great everything before this disease hits you you're kind of cursed for that because they're like oh thank you for all of your contribution but you're still kind of going to be you know put right. into the same category then, as everybody else right Mm -hmm. But the other, I mean, I guess from the other perspective, say, mm -hmm. for example, our family, it was, a, it, it's almost like that idea of equal, op not equal opportunity, what's the word, um, that my parents, because they didn't have a lot of money, they were still able to access services um, that they may not have been able to afford on their own, right? So in that sense... Um, you can see it from both sides, right? Like you can see it if you're if you're paying a lot of money, then yeah, it's like it's kind of unfair. But then if you're on the other end of it, then no, it's yeah, like, well, I understand that, but it, it it's the same thing that Wendy just said, right? Like it's, yeah, you know, because that essentially would be my mom, right? Because she yeah. and my father, like they had good jobs, so they have a good pension, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, I mean, we have, there are, there are definitely, and you can tell, like, you can tell definitely, like, um, with some of the, like, with some residents compared to others, right? Like, um, so, for example, with the private rooms, the private rooms, you're allowed to actually, um, and actually with the semis, you're allowed to bring your own um, furniture from home, right. kind of to make it look nice and cozy that kind of thing um and so you'll see some of the the apartments they look like apartments they look like they have their furniture from home it looks really nice and lived in and then you have other rooms like my dad's where it typically looks like a hospital room yeah they're trying they're um i guess well you have to go right sin yeah no no it's okay I, i'm good because um i was saying in peel they have they're going to have a dementia friendly they're doing a pilot project and they're mm -hmm. making one of the uh, nursing homes uh, completely dementia friendly oh that would be nice yeah so that's interesting right. yeah um but i mean the, the one thing that we were lucky with when we put them in was when my parents were together they, they tried to make it look like a little apartment because they were married and they put the beds together it was really cute but then after my mom passed, yeah, he has to share a room with somebody he doesn't know and their families um, who come and visit. And so it, it's definitely a different dynamic, right? Okay, because so we have a question yeah. here. So are we referring to subsidized nursing homes or the regular? Uh, these are, I guess, the government nursing homes we're referring to. Because there, yeah. there are private nursing homes. There are, yes. So this one is, um, it is government, um, government funded and monitored, right? So they have to follow government standards um, and mandates uh, in order to, but they do get some funding from government um, in order to do that. Right. Okay. 
Okay, so that's something to think about. Thank um, you my for experience, that. my experience, obviously, is completely opposite of that, right? So we'll talk about that. But thank you, Cindy, for chiming in and uh, and sharing your your expertise because obviously there's nothing better than somebody who's actually going through the process right now. So that was awesome. Thanks, guys. And if you guys have any other questions, let me know. Um, I mean, it, it, it sounds simple, but then it becomes complicated oh, when, sure. <laughs> when yeah. trying to explain it. But, um, and, and but Cindy, again, Cindy's yeah. completely involved on in the nursing. She sits on the board, right? Uh, the family council, yeah. Uh, the family council. Okay, so yeah. she's an expert in that area. Yeah, so, and they've been there for, yeah, over, over 13 years. So, We've, you know, experienced a lot of different changes and stuff. So if anybody does come up with any questions just regarding the nursing home experience, please feel free to kind of let me know. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I do have to run because I'm just, I'm on the road now. So. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. Bye. You're doing awesome again. Thanks. See you. Bye. Bye. All right, so why don't you maybe, since we're on that topic, start talking about maybe your experience making the choice to have your mom in home, in terms of in home care. Well, she gave you the perspective of the nursing home. What is the comparison yeah. in your opinion? I, I kind of knew my children. going in um, that it would be, I knew that no matter what your income was, that they would take your income and Therefore, it made more sense for, well, my, we made the decision not to put my mom in a nursing home from the, from the beginning when she had the diagnosis. So um, that uh, led to finding an actual caregiver. And at first, when I was new to this whole thing, I went through an agency um, thinking that that was the best route. And even that cost money because you had to pay like a, a finding fee. It, and um, over experience, um, I decided to hire like privately by like just putting out an ad and finding a person that way. Um, however, once you do decide to be to uh, look after a loved one in a nursing, I mean in your home, you become an employer. So you have to now get an employee number. You have to do payroll. You have to do all the necessary things that an employer will do. So you have to do T4s. And um, I used the Live-In Caregiver Program, which is a program run through CIC, which is immigration, that you can sponsor um, caregivers from a different country. I specifically sponsored from the Philippines. So um, that's an, another long process. You, you have to go through their whole process. You have to do a labor market survey. Now, hold on. Is there a specific reason why you chose the Philippines? Or was that just your choice? Or were you told that that's, they, they have better well, caregivers? Or Well, um, when I was dealing with the agency, it was uh, predominantly Filipinos okay. that were caregivers. And they had the background. And they, to even... Come, even to come here to sponsor somebody, they have to do a living caregiver program. Okay, so, so they're trained. Yeah, they're trained. Okay. So it just made more sense. Um, and that's the route I went. Um, in terms uh, of when you hire a living caregiver, you have to have, uh, you supply room and board. So you, you know, you have to be there's a criteria for it. Your so, place has to be set up yeah, and conducive. Right. To it has to have a private okay. room, has to have a loft. Like there's a lot of um, and, prerequisites. Right, and it's strict, right? Um, and that was the best option for me. However, again, that there comes a cost and it depends on, you know, what you're gonna negotiate, which of course has to be the labor it has to run the, the your prov provincial labor standards. So um, in it could cost you two thousand plus, right? Are you saying per month? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it could run you about two thousand twenty because you have to pay source deductions on top of their salary. So this is obviously like your mom's pension that's paying for predominantly all of that because mm -hmm. it's not like you have to come up with two grand plus your mortgage plus, you know. Well, if you don't have it, yeah, you do. Like if they didn't, if you're in a situation like 
Cindy or anybody else that doesn't have it. You you have to supplement the difference or, right? So then you, in essence, somebody like that, who's not set up like your mom, it would be almost cheaper but, to put her in a nursing home if you don't have that type of financial backing to be able to make your home accessible for that? Yeah, but if you think about it, it's still, it's probably cheaper. I don't know, I'm not sure what would be cheaper or not cheaper. Mm -hmm. um, I just know that you have to think, the person still has to live. So like that's 2,000, let's just say it's 2,000, we're gonna use that, it's $2,000. But the person still has to, they're still living somewhere, they still have to eat, there's still utilities, like that's just the just, care, yes. that's just care. That doesn't include incontinent supplies because it's not covered now, you know, there's stuff on top of that. Like, I, like where she said, like, um, everything's kind of covered except if you want a luxury item. Right. Nothing is covered above. That's crazy. Like, me. it's just 2000 and that's just that's it. labor. Jeez, man. And then everything else on top of that. That's, that's wild. Yeah. But that's the reality. That's wild. That's, and then even, you know, when you're talking to me about tax time and how oh, much God. money your mother oh, yeah. has to pay laying in a bed yeah. in palliative care mm. like it is mind-blowing I our government They're is like, like taxing you to death literally literally. <laughs> literally literally and then when you're done sorry to be crass but you pay taxes too right yeah because I remember, you have, to do, you have to do one last. Yeah, I remember my mom saying right. that that was a definite issue after and my dad still transitioned. Owe. He did owe after See? he was in the ground, yeah. and it was like you're still. That's what they say. What things for sure is death and taxes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's unbelievable. I, in any case, that's our government. Okay. Um, I think Anita had made that comment earlier in the... Because she, she, yeah. she knows firsthand, just like me. I know firsthand. It's crazy, guys. It's, it's wild. Anyway, okay. So, again, I guess making the comparison, or if you're actually going through this presently, and it's early onset, and you're, you know, your loved one just got a diagnosis, and you know, your world is upside down and turned upside down, you have all these decisions to make, and you don't know what to do and where to turn. I mean, these are some options that you definitely have to think about um, you know a lot of people myself included I mean I look at her and I'm like I don't know if I would have been able to do this you know obviously signing up for this you're not thinking it's going to be 18 years <laughs> but <laughs> at the same time mm -hmm. you kind of do whatever you have to because it's your loved one it's your, your mom, mom you know and dad. yeah um, but when you actually do weigh out both sides it's it's tough either way man like it's I'll tell you majority of the reason besides the fact that we had already decided that we I was like my mom was gonna come with me and um, it's a, a lot I we, we spoke about that you have to have like a team sort of of people unfortunately when my dad passed away um, I didn't have that team so like um, my brother lives in Trinidad. Um, majority of my family lives in Trinidad. Um, so I didn't have an, a, that team. So even if my mom was in a nursing home, like Cindy is, is saying, like I would still be the first point of contact anyways. And that wasn't conducive because I, I had a young baby, right? Like I, I couldn't, I could not. You couldn't split yourself in no so way. many different areas. At yeah. least she was at home yeah. so that I, yeah. I didn't have to travel somewhere yes. if, there was a, if there was a problem. I could just be, okay, let's just deal with it. It's here. Like, but that's another reason why it made more sense that of course. way. It yeah. really did. For sure. And I'm telling you, I, I said this to you too, even in the palliative journey, like, because that option came up again. Like if I really couldn't take it anymore, um, I could have got emergency, I guess my mom could have gone to a nursing home because of like the length of time and I could have probably done that option. But again, it's the same thing. I don't, I don't think I would ever go visit her. If right. she was in that nursing home for the last two years, I could probably count because every day I'd probably have an excuse. Oh, something came, you know? Cause I just probably wouldn't go, but at least right. now, 
I see her every day, yes. right? Yeah. So. And it's kind of what Cindy said, you know, she touched on that last week about the guilt that you go through yeah. putting your loved one or your parent in a nursing home. You know, like it's not an easy thing to just be able to say, okay, let me just dump my parent in this nursing home and let them be somebody else's problem. It's, it's, it's not. horrible. You know, you don't want to see your parent anywhere close to a facility like that. And so there's a, there's a lot that weighs into these type of decisions. And fortunately, if you're going to use that, I always say, if you're going to use that term with this disease, fortunately, but I do have to say my mom, um, maybe it would have been different too if she had other health concerns. Fortunately for me, my mom only has Alzheimer's. There are no, no, she doesn't have, like her organs are all healthy, right. but she's not on, you know, she doesn't need, she doesn't require any other medical um, treatment. So maybe if she did that option, I would not have a choice. Like Cindy's father has other complications. That's right. Except like, and on top of having Alzheimer's, my mom just has, right? Right. right. So that does make a difference. It makes a huge yeah. difference. So she doesn't really need that much medical um, care in that respect. What's up, Angel? Okay, come here. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I think, thanks, Anita. She said, I have a lot of strength. Yeah, I yes, think I do. For I sure. Do. I do. For sure. So we wanted just to thank you guys again um, for the support, the continuous support that you guys continue to give. Um, week in, week out, we see our, our loyal viewers that continue to comment and, um, you know, always tune in and, you know, share and do all kinds of stuff. So we just, we never want to allow that to go unnoticed. So we are grateful. Um, as well, we have some exciting new merchandise that, um... What, what new, what uh, are you talking about? Oh, the, you mean that old thing? What? What? I don't get I mean, it. This old thing. <laughs> yes, so this is the logo. You know who loves it? Jalen. He loves that hat. It really is great. He's like, it's cool. It's a great hat. Um, it's got the logo on the side and, of course, logo on the front. The WTF, What They Forget to Tell You, which is the name of the book. Um, shirts, hats, beanies, we're going to come up with some mugs, we're getting this done. So, you know, all of you guys can take the opportunity, <laughs> <laughs> little people That's just props, walking around, just props. Um, you can say hello, say hi, okay, all right, all right, okay, okay, all right, bye guys. So, um, you know, all these things are going towards a great cause, um, as you know, as you know, you guys, you know, Karen is going to be traveling in the near future to be speaking publicly about this disease and Alzheimer's awareness for caregivers and what their journeys are. So we're hoping to be able to fund some of the expense um, with the merchandise. So please, if you do want your own hat or shirt, beanie, whatever it is, inbox me or her. We can get you your own personal stuff uh your size all of that so there's white tees there's purple tees there's, there's black tees yeah. whatever it is that you um, require or like we can get you one and all proceeds go to the travel expenses that uh, she's going to need to come up with to travel so that's exciting yes it looks exciting. great i like this color um <laughs> so i'm going to need one of these Oh, because of the kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my toothless little one. Yeah, the, the tribe is feeling better from a couple weeks ago, so you know they're all over the place now. But in any case, anything else that we need to cover on or no. Nope. Okay. So we will be back next week, same place, same time. Oh, there you are. You mean there? You were like hiding the whole podcast. Who? You were kind of we like We were talking about Yeah, but you were like stuff. Yeah, but it was like you threw me off. You threw me off. You had your, like, medical astronaut game face on. No, not astronaut. Wait, doctor. No, no, no. Surgeon. No, no. Lawyer. No. Uh, what is it? What are you again? WTF. <laughs> All right, picky Nikki. Take care. <laughs> you too. Thanks for she tuning wanted, in. She was here. She, you missed her. She was here last Friday. Were you, like, the pokeroo? 
Yeah. And I missed you again. But we had to catch up. We, we had four hours to catch up on 40 years. Whoa. Whoa. We did pretty good. We did pretty good. All right, good. Awesome. All right, anything else? No. Okay, continue to share, 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 share. Thanks for everyone that joined today and asked questions. That was awesome. And then she thought. Let me, uh, I never left. <laughs> huh? Because I've always been here. Okay. Thanks again. Appreciate it. I, I don't know what you're doing. Egyptian. I'm just going with it. Okay. Okay. So, guys, thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Kevin. Um, enjoy the weather because I think it's supposed to actually get nicer since yesterday was the first day of spring. You I never my, know. Well, I have my beanie, so I'm prepared. I'm ready to go. It's the first day of spring. It doesn't matter. Spring. I'm prepared. Okay. She's prepared. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Be blessed. Stay blessed. We will see you next week. Peace and love. All right. Ciao.